a lot of people are worried that the game isn't actually going to release. So we'll go ahead and we'll watch it. Here we go. My phone was going nuts last night. Let me guess. Yep. The day before got delayed again. Yes. What? You don't say. You don't say. You don't say. What's going on, everybody? It's with Buzz Lightbeer, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. And at this point, are you truly surprised with any of this? How the many times has this game been delayed? Like three, five, like ten, two or three times? Okay. That's pretty bad. Before, just days before, a major raw gameplay reveal has again postponed and pushed That's out smart. the dates. And we'll get into all of yep. this because I've Keep done some going. digging here and I have some now deleted receipts. Okay. In case you aren't yet a sub, please smash that big, beautiful subscribe button cool to stay game. up to date on all the latest the I day before news. And while you're at it, ring the notification bell to receive my latest upload alerts. Okay. Here we go again. All right. Never? No, no, no. They said it's going to come out real soon. It, it'll be out soon, guys. Don't worry about it. Yeah, for sure. It'll, it'll come out the same time that Star Citizen does. All right, let's see. What so this, this latest chapter all starts back on January 15th. We get this announcement from the official day before Discord that okay. the team at Fantastic have received the go ahead from legal to publish raw gameplay footage. Okay, which Great. is something we haven't yet seen. And the wording is odd, almost like they're doing us a favor releasing this footage because how could we be so skeptical after all these heavily scripted vertical slice trailers? And then kind of late last night, at least it was for me on the East Coast US, we get wind that the day before has been delisted on Steam. That's right, the number two most wishlisted game oh on all of Steam has poof, vanished. The day and before you gone. See, it's right there. No, see? What do you mean? Yeah, they just changed the name of it. And here's where it gets really dicey. Their official Discord server posts this message to calm the hordes just okay. moments after this delisting. We are currently experiencing a minor technical difficulty with our game's visibility on the Steam Store page. This is a known bug that has affected multiple titles in the past. More on this in a moment. Please note that Steam regularly conducts maintenance on Tuesdays, and this issue will likely be resolved during that time. Okay. We kindly ask that you refrain from sending negative messages or joining in with the complaints of others. Rest assured that our game will be visible on the Steam store again once the maintenance is complete. Which, I mean, that's reasonable, okay? Everything is fine so far. It's like, yeah, they had a problem with Steam. People have problems with Steam. It's not to be unexpected, sure. Okay. And then they finish it up with patience is so key. Far? Now, I would argue that patience the gaming community key. has been more than patient with Fantastic and their title the day before. But anyways, here's where it, it starts to get more interesting. Okay. So first, I started digging into this. I reached out to someone who knows way more about Steam than I do. I asked them about this statement from Fantastic, mm -hmm. the known bugs, etc. I showed them this receipt log and their exact Got statement and response back to me was no. That's total BS. It is not a known bug. It is not common. Then we get the Steam logs for the day before showing that changes were made, removing the movies and trailers on their Steam store page. The team claims that this is Steam delisting the game, but to me, these look like their team is going in and deleting the movies and screenshots, as in they're just trying to remove all the evidence, possibly. What the fuck is this? I, I, this is like, this is so weird. I don't know. It's a also spell. that entire, we are experiencing minor technical uh -huh. difficulties with the game. Discord message has since been entirely deleted, okay. which is a huge red flag. That's right. That entire message that I showed you on screen has now been removed from their official discord server. Okay. Now I held off on publishing anything last night as one. I was just totally exhausted from the work day. And number two, I've seen enough from this. I, I will say so far, this does not, I'm, I'm not, completely convinced that it's fake yet there's still a chance that it's not i i'm, I'm not 100 percent 
deem it fantastic based on their previous cases of okay. jumping out of the boiling hot frying pan scenarios that I decided to wait for another round of what I fully expected to appear. Mm-hmm. And my patience was rewarded. Hours later, we get this statement over on Twitter. Dear fans, right before the release, Steam blocked our game page at the request of a private individual because of the name The Day Before. As you know, our game was announced in January 2021. At the time of the announcement, The Day Before Game Trademark was available. After the announcement of the game, the above-mentioned individual filed out an application before us to register the game trademark the day before in the United States. And then they've got... What the fuck? A link here. I'll get into more of that. I mean, to be fair, they should have copyrighted this before they even announced it. A patent troll? Yeah, like, like, there's like two things, right? They're stupid for for not getting this ahead of time before it went public like they're a hundred percent dumb as fuck for that and also this system is a hundred percent dumb as fuck if somebody just randomly put this out there and they copyrighted it to obviously troll them because at this point like you're effectively using a government system maliciously so like both of these things are bad assuming that it's even true Just a moment, because I did some digging for you. What's next? Previously, we were not aware of the existence of claims. I would press F to doubt. We found out about this only on January 19th, 2023, when we received a complaint from him and a request to contact him. Now we found out all the circumstances of the incident, and we will definitely solve everything. We previously planned to post a lengthy gameplay video later this month, but we'll have to sort this issue out first. We will post a video. I mean, like, if they say that... If, if they say that this is what's happening, and it's like, well, you know, we're not uh, like we're not ready or something like that, and it's only going to take a month, that's not really going to freak me out. Like, I, I would say, I, I don't think it's that big of a deal. Just change the name. I don't think they should. I don't think they should have to. I mean, the, what I'm saying, I think, I mean, it's, it's got to be like illegal. They, they have to have some sort of protection for people that are maliciously filing trademarks and copyrights for things that they clearly have no intention to hold on to. And they're just doing this to uh, extort somebody out of money. Like, I can almost guarantee you that there's some sort of uh, allowance for, for people looking into this. Yeah, this is ridiculous. Oh, ASAP. More on this in a moment, too. Okay. As a result, we have made the difficult decision to postpone the launch of the game to November 10th, 2023. We understand this may be a disappointment for many of our fans. However, we want to ensure we release the best possible game. So, are you stating that it was not the best possible game that was going to be releasing? Oh, wait, wait, wait. There was a trademark website that was was being shared in Lyric's chat that showed they owned it since last year. Well, I guess that makes sense because, like, obviously this person might have contacted them or something like that. But I, I don't know. This seems really scummy. March the 1st talk more about that again uh, our 100% focus remains on the game itself and how to deliver you the best game possible thank you and we hope for your support sincerely my Tona and fantastic mm-hmm. okay so you've got two parts of this announcement and we need to be able to break these apart into separate chapters first off you've got this claim trademark issue and then the second part is yeah. the delay announcement itself but first off let's break apart this trademark they tag some vague document from a previous filing for the title, like uh-huh. back in 2014. Really doesn't make much sense to me. Wait, Anyways, what? I've done some digging on my own on the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office because okay. remember they mentioned yeah, this is it all was public. filed for in the United States. Yeah. By the way, the Patent and Trademark Office has their TESS page, which stands for Trademark Electronic Search System (TESS). Now, if you search the day before. You've got a Soon Lee applying for the rights back on May 21st, 2021, and registering those rights on November 1st, 2022. Now, I don't know anything about Soon Lee. This could be actually an employee of Fantastic. I 
have no idea, but they've got the rights as of November 1st, 2022. As a point of record, the official day before announcement trailer aired on January 27th, 2021. So that's five months before Soon Lee applies for the rights. And, and I'm just going to make a huge assumption here, but you would think that the team at Fantastic would have tried to apply for the day before copyright before that date, but... Yeah, it's like, if this was filed since last year, how are you just finding about... How are you just finding out about it now? Because, like, if this is gameplay from the day before, they have spent probably over a million dollars already making this game happen. So how is it that you spend seven figures, maybe eight figures making a game and you don't even figure out the copyright at all? That's nuts, man. Like, yeah, you have nobody who's looking into this. There's no, maybe an incompetence. It's got to be like, bro, this has got to be like 10 people all making the same mistake. That's what's so crazy. And I think that's why people think that it's fake. Is that like, how is it that... Over the past year, you never had, you, you never had the motivation to like go to court with this guy to try to sue him for the copyright, to try to buy it from him, to try to change the name of the game, to do anything except for the day before some new content is going to come out. Suddenly, oh wait a second, I've got to change everything. That's nuts, man. Why not change the name? Well, because I don't think they should have to. If the person is maliciously reserving a, a trademark and they have no intention of actually making a game, then I don't think they should be able to hold on to it. Like, I'm going to be totally honest. I think it's bullshit. So, yeah, that, that's, that's how I stand on it. I guess you would be wrong because according to this yeah. test record system here, Fantastic applies for the day before on January 27th 2022 mm -hmm. a full year after their first announcement trailer airs over on youtube now this is just for the united states there could be contradicting records in some form internationally who knows yeah i'm done digging up stuff on this one now on to the second so at a certain point it's it's their word against you know people's better interests or, or people's better uh you know like discretion because like we can't really tell whether they're faking it or not with this amount of information. It's just that every single time that something like this happens, a delay happens, some problem happens, and especially whenever they're linking to something and they don't have an explanation for like why this didn't happen a year ago, like how you just had this hanging over your head, you didn't tell anybody until the content had to come out. Like, I think if they had just come out and said like, listen, we're not ready. We said we were gonna be ready, we're not, it is what it is. I think people would have been like, fuck you, but okay. But this is just like, whenever you come up with an excuse, it's a thousand times worse than if you just say it. Part of this announcement, and that's the delay part, and of everything that has gone down in the last 24 hours, this part sounds the most accurate and truthful to me, besides the statement that they just found out the name to their game. The rights to the day before were not available on January 19th. Again, that sounds highly sus. Anyways. They are delaying the launch of the day before, again, I might add, from March 1st to November 10th, which was all... That is massive. March to November? March is in like a month, almost. Like a month and a half, two months. T November? That is fucking five or... What is that? Like six or seven months. That's crazy. Ten months expected yeah, and we expect it to happen again sometime later this year and it's like I, I think that there were a lot of delays during covid but it, it's like this is this is one of those situations where any one of these pieces of evidence seems like it's not really that compelling but the compelling thing is that all of them exist simultaneously and just so we can set a bit of precedent here, and yeah. I'm speaking of Fantastic, they set the mega event month announcement date. I forget what year it was. Remember, that was an entire month they gave themselves, and they just flat out missed it. Uh -huh. They also originally set their first live game launch date. We didn't set it. They set it. And just weeks prior to that date, they postponed for a full year so they could supposedly transition from Unreal Engine 4. So over this has already been delayed to 2023. 
I mean, that's crazy because I remember whenever, uh, what was it? When Ashes of Creation transitioned to Unreal 5, I mean, they, there was never really a, a point where they said they were going to release it, but it didn't really seem like it was that much of a transition for them. They just said, hey, we're moving things over there and that's it. So it's like, how is Ashes of Creation able to do this and not really seemingly have any massive uh, scope creep from it, but this company isn't? It made it even easier. Yeah, exactly. To five. And now, precedent here, they set the March 1st mm -hmm. launch window, and you guessed it, they delayed it again. Right. They also oh, claim that the 1st. raw okay. gameplay so like footage has now. also had to have been delayed and definitely also due to this copyright issue. Now... Here's just a thought, I'm just rambling here, but just take the name down and call it a, an Unreal Engine 5 project from Fantastic until you nail down another name. And if this is truly an issue, then you can just relist the game on Steam and immediately post that raw gameplay footage. I thought I was actually done with this video today, but I decided just on a whim to do just a little more research, and I'm just going to throw in some other thoughts here. But the team at Fantastic claims it is the day before name that is causing all of these legal issues. It's a yeah, it's like, if that's what the issue is, why couldn't he have them take down... Why couldn't he have them take down their Twitter? If their Twitter is for a game that's trademarked. You see what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. Why couldn't he retroactively have all of the previous content taken down? Why is it only that this, that this raw gameplay thing is what's not able to be uploaded, but nothing in the past and nothing else that's happening concurrently, like the existing footage? I'm sure, like, if I go and I look at this, uh, let me see if I can pull this up here. Uh, the day, fuck, uh, the day, fuck, uh, the day before, uh, official. Okay. So, do these people have, like, a, it looks like they don't have a YouTube channel. Okay. Uh, the day, day before, uh, okay. The day before game. I, I mean, fuck, man. Like, this is the Fnatic YouTube channel. And they have footage of a game that's called The Day Before. So how are they not able to upload footage, but simultaneously they have footage of a game called The Day Before that's on their YouTube channel? And also, if all these things were copyrighted, etc., let me see whenever this was uploaded. This was uploaded on January 4th, is that correct? And then the trademark was filed when? In 2021? Or 2020? 22? When, when was it filed? It was filed on December 2022. January 27th, 2022. Okay, so it, this actually, that, this is a small positive for them where there is actually no footage that is provided ahead of time. Uh, or sorry, provided after that date. I, I, I don't know, man. Like, I don't know what the legal stuff with this is, but this seems very, very suspicious. The original guy filed for it in 2021. Could be a complaint for future content, but it still shouldn't take that long for a gameplay video. Yeah, I mean, like, for example... I don't see why they couldn't just release, like theoretically, why they couldn't just release the the video of the gameplay. Because if you don't attach the title to the gameplay and you just put out the video and you say, hey, this is what we're working on. Also, like, it's the official Twitter for the day before developed by Fantastic Games and published by these people. They have a, a fucking website for it. So... It's clear that they're not, it's, it's not like they can't talk about this. It's not like they can't mention the name of the game because it's still in their fucking Twitter name. So what is the logic that 
You can have it in your Twitter name. You can say that you're the official Twitter for it. You can have a website that's called The Day Before. You can have it being published by some other fucking group of people. You can have all of these things. You can have your, your picture that says The Day Before. You can have a picture of a guy from the game The Day Before, but you can't have footage from the game The Day Before, even though you simultaneously do have footage from the game The Day Before, which trademarks and these types of things do not necessarily exist. I don't think they exist retroactively, but I can almost fucking guarantee you if you scroll down here, let's see here. Uh, do we have any other footage? Oh, there we go. This is December 9th, 2022. So if copyright was such a fucking issue for you and you weren't able to upload any content because it was claimed on December, sorry, January 27th, 2022, what the fuck are you doing here uploading footage of a video game that's titled The Day Before on D December 2022? So there's just no fucking logic behind this at all. Do you see what I'm saying? December's way after January. It's like a year after. So, like, if they didn't know this, so, like, you, you, like, there's, there's no logic in which this makes sense. Do you see what I'm saying? Because if they were given a cease and desist where they could not produce any other content after the time period of January 27th, 2022, we're looking at content December 9th, 2022. And, oh, there's another one right there. The day before. Hashtag the day before. Look, look at all this fucking content that they're releasing. And they're also expressing and, and, and putting themselves out there as the developers for this. They have a website for it. They have a YouTube channel that, to be fair, retroactively has content for it where it's titled this. There is no reason why they were not able to just sit here and upload a video or any picture or something like that that is raw gameplay footage without adding the name. There, there's and, and they could just not include the name for it and everybody would know that it's the day before because it's being published by the day before Twitter. And before you go and say, oh, well, if that's the case, then, uh, you know, they could say that, oh, well, they were uploading it and pretending to be them. Well, they're already doing that. Like any any degree of justification for this completely trips over itself after you ask more than one question. They said 2023. Oh, so you're saying that they. Wait, so you're saying that the person copyrighted it January 2023. So all of this footage is from a game that they didn't have or sorry, trademarked. No, it's 2022. OK, that's what I thought. Yeah, they received yeah, they received a complaint at that time period. It's a little bit too convenient. That like they receive a complaint right before they have to do a really big reveal and not in the past year. That this person had, you seem conflicted. Well, I'm not conflicted. I'm thinking about like, what could the possibilities be? Um, it still doesn't add up. No, it doesn't. Fanatic was unaware of the trademark breach before the 19th. Right. It, and I think that. Oh man, like. If they were unaware of the trademark breach and at this very moment at, at this at this very moment the trademark is active. You understand? So like right now the trademark for the day before game is active. So aren't they literally breaking it by having this and by having this? How are they not? I, it's just why is there an eight-month delay needed for over a trademark dispute? I, I have no idea. I mean, I could very easily ex assume that, you know, illegal proceedings could take that long. They're so dumb they didn't search for the trademark regularly. So, yeah, it, it's basically like there are two alternatives of, like, what, what happened. 
Number one, they are lying and they're doing this in order to buy more time. And number two, they have been so grossly negligent that people don't even believe that it's real. Those are the two possibilities that we have right now. Yeah, why would they lie though? They would lie because they're trying to raise money and then use the money and uh, just pretty much like get away with not making the game and then take as much money from people as possible before they figure out. So you keep stringing somebody along like that. That's kind of what I'm expecting. Okay, anyway, let's, let's watch the rest of this. Uh, IGN said the day before developer Fantastic said it was planning a delay even before the trademark dispute. Dispute just pushed the uh, dispute pushed the game back eight months. But that, uh, okay, uh, that doesn't even make sense. Uh, I'll look at the IGN interview after the video, okay? Okay. The trademark issue that's causing all these delays. They then delist the game over on Steam to apparently avoid trademark issues. But then I want you to take a look at this. All their day before videos are still live and visible on their official fantastic public YouTube channel. Also, exactly. their website is still splashing the day before logos yeah. all over the place. So which is it fantastic? trademark issues or the other thing that we all know is actually true i'm done with this one for today i've said this before but at least fantastic in the day before is entertaining right they give you a lot of value proposition and bang for your the reason why i saw somebody in chat ask this like let's just give them the benefit of the doubt why is this such a big deal like what well, let's just wait eight months isn't this a game that people were like fan funding like this had a kickstarter and everything I'm pretty sure it did. I'm like 99% sure it did. Yes. Wait, okay, so you're saying there was no fan funding for the day before. Oh, well, uh, it's not, and they didn't get the money. Okay. People are saying yes, you're lying. They're a charity. Uh, they get people to contribute to the game. Just volunteer working. Well, what would be the value of... Like, that doesn't make sense that it's a scam then. What would be the value of scamming people into working on a game that they don't intend on completing? Like, what are, like where's the value there? Like, are they going to try to sell the assets or, or something like that? Like, that's... I, I don't know. This is so weird. Buck for all this drama they present. Does the game exist? Mm -hmm. Will it ever launch? What will it look like if that day ever comes? I mean, who in the hell knows? Yeah. Leave me your feedback in the comment section below. Remember to smash that sub button and ring the bell to receive my latest upload alerts. Remember, you can also find and follow me over on Twitch, Twitter, and in my community Discord server. Links to all of which can be found in the video description and pinned comments below. Until the next one, this is Latuna Buzz Lightbeer. Signing off. Okay. Well, oops. I so did just not like mean to do that. Uh, I just accidentally clicked on something and it changed. My phone okay. was going. There we go. So uh, I'll link you guys this video. I think it's a pretty good video, honestly. Uh, investors, maybe. Um, investors should be savvy enough to know not to get scammed this way. So they have investors, but they're not being fan funded. I think the fact that they have investors, but they're not being fan funded is probably an argument that it's not a scam because there's less of a value add to, to to scam people or sorry there's less of a yeah there's less of a value that they can provide or that they will gain from lying because the investors are already giving them like it's not like they're investing a you know, an ever increasing amount of money. If somebody is an investor, this means that they put $5 million in and they have a certain amount of, let's say, equity in the company or something like that. So if these people go and they say, hey, it's going to take longer before it comes out, like, I don't think that that's a guarantee that it was a scam.
There's no reason to scam. Yeah, it just doesn't it doesn't really make a lot of sense. FTX has a lot of investors too. No, FTX is totally different because FTX was a public company that people were publicly investing their own money into. That's entirely fucking different if they're take than if they're taking private investment. Like it has nothing to do with that. Because you have a deadline, so you have to remove everything. Uh, if they got the letter on the 19th of January, they aren't allowed to upload new stuff from the time of knowledge about it. Maybe they're working on solving this right now. Got a week, wait a week or two. Maybe they'll remove stuff until then. That's a good point, too. Theranos wants to talk. I don't remember uh, what was Theranos. Um, was Theranos a public company? I don't, yeah, no, I know it was a blood tester company by Elizabeth Holmes and she was had like, she dressed like Steve Jobs and everything. It was not, yeah, I don't remember. It was so long ago. And, and also like, I'm not saying that it's not a scam. What I'm saying is that you're like, the direction that I try to come at this from is like, what is the most likely outcome? All of these things can be true. And it can look like the biggest scam imaginable, and it can actually not be a scam. Or none of these things can be true, and it's still a fucking scam. So I'm not saying it's, and I'm not like benefit of the doubt or not. I'm just looking at this and I'm like trying to like judge like based off of everything that, that I've been reading about this. Is it likely or not likely that it that they're trying to fucking scam people? And I don't think that it's that certain. I, I straight up, I, I am not 100% certain that they're trying to scam people. Incompetence and so do I. Yeah, I think that there is a possibility. I think that it's probably 50-50. And even, even that, I, I don't even really, I have no fucking idea. But I do think that there are two alternatives. Number one, they're scamming. Number two, they were so grossly negligent and so badly mismanaged that they've had to de uh, delay this game three or four times. And also, and also on top of that, they never thought to sort out this trademark issue before then. If it's so mismanaged, imagine how bad the game will be. And that's actually a really good fucking point, is that if the company on like a legal level is this badly mismanaged, if the development of the game is being delayed by over a year, and it's like, yeah, I know Elden Ring got delayed, for example, but this, this company, I don't know how many good games like Dark Souls that they made. So option three, there was no game, there's never a game. Well, no, that I already said that. It's option option one. It could be a scam. I believe it's not even a game, and it's just assets of levels they put together to make videos. Talk about scamming. I have a lot of knowledge of it. What do you mean? Open a new scam account? Bro, if I did, I'd just work with these guys, maybe. Shit. Uh, if this is a Kickstarter early access, and it would be a scam. If they aren't taking money from consumers, how is it a scam? Well, it's still a scam. If it, like Scamming investors is still scamming. But what I'm saying is that a, a company's public image is less important if they're not being funded directly from the public. Does that make sense? So, like, if they're not soliciting donations and money from public funding, then it would be less important for them to have the public think that they're right. Isn't it scamming investors fraud? A hundred fucking percent. IGN interview. Okay, let's see what the IGN interview is. Um, okay, and this is a, an interview that they did here. Okay, let me just make sure I read all this. Okay, and so we'll go through this public transparency. Yeah, but like public transparency isn't always a good thing. People always want transparency, but in some cases... Being transparent with the public is not something that's beneficial. People are mad. They drop games after three months, apparently. People being mad uh, about that blowing up steam on this issue. I don't know. We'll see. Let's see here. We plan to move the game's release uh, before and plan to announce it with, and that's the publisher, uh, 
uh, in a 10 minute gameplay video, Fantastic told IGN, and then you will all know what happened. So to be on the safe side, to ensure there are no more transfers, we, along with the publisher, chose November 10th. Oh, that there's no, no more delays. That is a safe date given the trademark dispute. Let me look this up. Uh, I'm looking to see like how long it would take on average to settle a trademark dispute. Yeah, it doesn't really say. I mean, I think that's like... That's probably like really complex because if they did seek legal counsel, it there is a good chance the legal counsel told them it could be six to eight months. But I also can't imagine a world where the legal counsel didn't t tell them that, yeah, it could be years. So... Oh, man my random Kickstarter game than getting mad about? Well, this wasn't a Kickstarter game. Uh, despite never uh, having now been delayed twice with the first caused by a switch to Unreal Engine 5, Fantastic is confident that uh, it will have its trademark disputes uh, solved by the new release date and plans to use the extra time for improving the game in the meantime. We're very confident that this issue will be resolved since we have strong legal partners. The extra time will allow us to better prepare for the release and overall improvements with the game. As for complaints and allegations that it's not actually in development, uh, which have been erupting on its Reddit page and Discord server, Fantastic maintained that its game will definitely be released. The storm will calm down eventually, and time will put everything in its place. When the game comes out, people will finally see the truth. Uh, it said, but while we're here, we're grateful for such a fantastic journey and for you being with us. Oh, okay. Um... That's nice. We understand that some players not seeing the whole picture might have doubts about the game. Our whole focus has been on the product itself. We've been creating the game for four years. All these years have been full of blood, sweat, and tears. Uh, and many of the members of our team, it's unpleasant to hear such accusations. We didn't take a penny from people. No crowdfunding, no pre-orders, no donations. The game is fully funded from Mitoya, one of the largest mobile publishers in the world, who checked the game's build at every milestone per our contract. I mean, to be honest, I think this is a really strong argument. Like, that, that is a very strong argument that it's probably not a scam. It sounds legit. Yeah. I mean, do you think like, I, I mean, how, how big is this company? Let me see. Uh, Itona, a uh, group of companies, uh, value, valuation, uh, maybe this one here. Um, I need a more recent fuck. I've never had to do this before. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how, like how big the company is, right? Because if it's like a really small company, then it could be like a, you know, like a scam within a scam. Both are Russian? Yeah, it's hard to say. Well, anyway, if this is a very large company, it would make sense. If it's a very large and influential company, this lowers the probability that it is a scam. And I don't think that there's ever a point where it becomes certain that it is or is not. But I do think that if this is actually a large, influential company, and, like, they're not going to go out. Like, imagine if Mytona... Like, because they're going to see this interview. It's not like they didn't see this. Like, I, I guarantee you that, like, five minutes, actually, probably not. Probably they had to okay this statement even with them. But the moment that they found out about this shit, they were on their ass. Russian equals most likely, most likely scam? Well, I don't, I have no idea if it's Russian or not. They scam their workers? Yeah, but that doesn't mean that they're getting, 
that does it, that that's not even like a, that that's not logical because if my toya if, if my tona scammed its workers why would that make any sense that they would be less willing or less aware of getting scammed themselves i think that if anything it would make them more aware of that because they do it themselves uh Scamming them. So, yeah, I, I don't think that's going to... Just because they're Russian doesn't mean they're scammers. Yeah, that that's stupid. But anyway, let's see here. We only believe in the final product. No matter what anyone says, you'll see for yourself on November 10th this year. We hope that after the game's success, we'll give people faith in this life. If, uh, it, we'll give people faith that in this life, if you persevere towards a dream, it will come true despite all the obstacles and doubts. Fantastic was also forced to defend its un its use of unpaid workers in June last year. What? Company claimed every employee paid or not is a volunteer because we always try to bring in proactive people with open hearts. Okay, latter are unpaid workers who contribute to game development ranging from translating to community moderating. Unpaid workers get cool rewards and free codes, okay. Company faced criticism online following an update to its website that included the dedicated volunteers feature. Okay. Like, what do you mean criticism online? It's It's got seven likes. Who fucking cares? What do you mean criticism has seven likes? All right, let's see. Um... They have like 450 employees. Let's see, I'll, I'll read this. Uh, total Mytona mobile app revenue in December 2022 was 5 million, including 3 million for iOS and 2 for Android. Total mobile app downloads was 800,000. Yeah, this is a really big fucking company in that regard. So look at this here. Now, I don't know if this is true, but we're going to assume that it is. Uh, is that my Tona mobile app had revenue of five five million dollars in one year, or sorry, in one month? There's no fucking way that they're just getting finessed by these guys. It would make sense that that's what they're doing. You see what I'm saying? Those numbers, it's pretty big. Yeah, I think so. Uh, my Tona is the funder, though. It's not the development company. What do you think the fucking odds are that Mytona would have just let them go out and say this about them if it's not true? Do you understand how much trouble they would get in with that? That they would just like say, hey, yeah, this massive company is actually, uh, you know, they're because what, what they're doing effectively is that they're using this company's reputation as a qualifying like they're, they're using it to to build up their own reputation they're saying that this is a big company this is an important company and they're the uh they're, they're the uh, the producer of it and because of that it's okay you see what i'm saying yeah uh my tone has a twitter account yeah i saw that but it didn't have that many followers so i have no idea Hmm. He was making shit up to get mad at Fantastic at this point. Yeah. Uh, they made a pretty good game before, Prop Night. Uh, probably would lead to a breach in contract. Yeah. Like, I, I can guarantee you this is probably... I can't guarantee you. But I, I think that there is probably a 99% chance that this is true. 99% chance this is true. Because this company doesn't want to get sued into oblivion and lose everything by misstating the relationship they have with their publisher and lying about them, using their publisher's integrity as a qualifier for their own. Like, uh, really. I mean, there, there's no fucking way they would have done that. Uh, my tone of revenue was $37 million in 2021. 37 fucking million dollars. Uh, that means this is like easily over a hundred, two hundred million dollar company. 
So yeah, uh, no way this game uh, is real, too good to be true. I don't know, man. I don't think that there's enough evidence so far to be 100% certain that it's a scam. And if you look at the interview here, I actually think that it's unlikely that it's a scam. Uh, I'm going to go out and I'm going to say, it seems unlikely that it's a scam. With everything that I've seen so far, I feel like that is the... Yeah, I mean, is, there, is anybody, like, why, why does anybody here think that it is? And, and we'll talk about this. Mytona tweeted. Okay, I'll go ahead and I'll pull it up. Mytona official, what do they tweet about this? They just retweeted it. Please check out an important update about the day before. Okay, so they're 100%. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Like, Go to the website? Okay. The day before, coming soon. Warning, cryptocurrencies fraud. True. Um... <clears throat> uh, what about blog, maybe? No, nothing. Game dev, game updates, nothing. Community, maybe? No. Okay, so after the IGN review, you think it's not a scam, but a really bad management. Yes. I think that, so this is my logic, okay? Because after this, I want to move on. My logic is that Mytona is a massive company. It's easily valued at probably, you know, most companies are valued at 7x their annual revenue. So if they made $37 million, you know, you're looking at this being like a $200 million company. And not only that, but it seems obvious that they are supporting what this company is doing. It's not like this company is acting uh, without their understanding. And this is the, the publisher that is making their own post. They're not even retweeting it. They are posting it on their own. So it's very clear that this publisher is a legitimate publisher. They published multiple legitimate titles in the past. And on top of that, there's an interview that IGN did with the people that work uh, at the studio. Like, what's the studio called? Fantastic, which is a studio that's developing the day before. And they said explicitly that Mytona, the publisher, one of the largest mobile publishers in the world, who check the game's build at every milestone. So is there a chance that this is a scam? Yes, there is. But I do not think that it's likely. Does that make sense? Because if they, because I do not believe that the company Fantastic would have, because really you've got to keep in mind, this is a very specific statement. This is not like them saying, oh, yeah, you, you know, we wouldn't be supported by them if we weren't making a real game. This is them saying that our publisher, Mytona, check the game's build at every milestone as per our contract. This is a specific thing that they said happened. So, I, I, I think that there's no way they could get away with saying that. And then this company not immediately sue them into fucking oblivion for, you know, effectively damaging their reputation and lying about them. Or, you know, like, just like cutting the partnership in general. So there's no reason they would do that. Video is sensationalizing to make people mad at the dev for delaying their game. Well, I think it's because a lot of people think that something is a scam. And as soon as people think something is a scam, thinking that something is a scam makes people think that they're smart because people then believe that they're smarter than the person scamming them because they're able to see beyond what that person is trying to do. So in any circumstance where a person is in a position where they can think that they're smart for feeling a way or thinking something, I will assume that people will be more willing to think that than what the evidence provides. 
because people want to believe that they're smart. People want to believe that they are intuitive, that they are discerning, and that they can see between the lines with these things. And people feel like that so much that they will even make things up or exaggerate things or ignore evidence because that makes them feel smarter. So that's why I think people are saying it's a scam or they haven't seen the IGN interview. I think that this IGN interview went like it went from making me 50 50 that it's a scam to like single digit percentage that it's a scam. Like I think we're talking 90 plus percent that it's not a scam. Hmm. Let's see here. Dev just screwed up and uses the name of the publisher. Honestly, no fan was scammed. That, that is true also, that no individual person is getting scammed. It's like you're not really getting scammed by these people stringing you along for a game that doesn't come out. Like uh, Blizzard, for example, was going to make StarCraft Ghost, which was a StarCraft game that was an FPS. I think it was like after Metroid Prime came out, they thought about doing this, and uh, it never came out. There was like footage for the game, there was gameplay, I think, even of it, and it just never happened. So it's not like there's no there's no uh, previous thing with that. Did Blizzard scam people because of that? No, they scam people because of other stuff. So there you go. But that was leaked though, right? No, it was not leaked. This was uh, like StarCraft Ghost was on the title and like the cover of like Game Informer and probably not Nintendo Power, but like all of the other gaming websites from back in the day. Let me see here. Uh, I'll read a couple more of these. Sanjay, another universe? Yeah, exactly. Uh, had the same issue? Yeah, I remember I was really excited for it too. And uh, Ghost is a big deal? Absolutely. Uh, only got refunded once. Blizzard uh, uh, themselves talked about it? Yes, they did. Did you see the community manager post? No, I did not. Force Gaming put out an interesting video breaking out the gameplay. Worth a watch. I mean, it doesn't matter how much you break down the gameplay. Because if you break down the gameplay and you say that the gameplay is inauthentic in any way, this would assume that you know more and you are more discerning and smarter than people that are employed by a gaming publisher company. A massively profitable, massively successful gaming publisher company. No, you're not. So, I, I, yeah, I, I don't fucking think so, at least. Ghost in our story? No, I, I, I see what you're saying, but yeah. Okay. Hire some. Uh, they hire some real stupid people sometimes. But hey, sometimes. Yeah, sure. Discord mods uh, haven't even seen gameplay yet, and are having doubts. Discord mods haven't even seen gameplay yet. Well, of course not, because they they're not NDA'd. Like you're you're not gonna give people NDA'd gameplay footage that the public doesn't have access to, because it's almost impossible to. They are. Well, maybe they are. Uh, I don't know what a, I mean, maybe one of the, I, I'll tell you this. If I was a company and I was them, would I give Discord mods and community managers, especially if they're not being paid or some bullshit like this, would I give them access to like, t to gameplay footage? Absolutely fucking not. No. So, big surprise, this company made the exact same decision. Mobile publishers post fake ads all the time. Often the game does not even look close. That's true. But I don't think that that is evidence. The fact that mobile games can sometimes be inauthentic or misleading is not evidence that the mobile game publisher that is publishing those misleading games is being misled themselves. There's no logical congruency there. There's, there's no like implication that makes sense. 
But he is using Unreal Engine as easy as part. Trying to ship an MMO is a lot more challenging. Yeah, we'll see. But I've, we've, we've gone back and forth about this, yeah. Uh, anyway, it's not a scam. It's just being mismanaged. The guys are fucking idiots for not having the trademark reserved. I also think that the fact that these people can have a trademark reserved from underneath them whenever they've been publishing and developing this game for years is ridiculous. Or a trademark, excuse me. I think they should easily get the trademark. It's clear what the name of the game is, and if the person who's developing the game has no evidence of actually looking to develop a game or anything like that, uh, then I think they should have instantaneously lose this trademark. Even if they're trying to develop a game and it's like super rudimentary or something like that, uh, it's very evident that especially like you've got to look at like copyright. When is copyright created in the US on inception? That means that the moment that this company put out content for this game under this name, it is effectively copyrighted content. So I know copyright and trademark are not the same thing, but I think the same general thing should apply. It seems very... It seems obviously fucked up, and this is like clearly... If this was a video game, there would be a patch to fix this. But unfortunately, the people that are running our video game, called the government, are just as bad as most of the people running the actual video games. And, uh, big fucking surprise, they haven't done this. But it seems like a massive fucking exploit that somebody can be developing a game, you can, re uh, you can register a trademark for the same name as that game, and then extort them for money. Because effectively what a person is doing is they are co-opting a government system that is meant to help people to extort people for money. So of course this should not be possible. It's not even a question. Uh, didn't something similar happen in one of the Avengers movies? I have no idea. But one thing I do know is that Disney... Disney would not have this issue. Okay? Yeah. Uh, let's just be honest. Okay. Uh, I'll link you guys the video again that we watched about this. And I'll, I'll read some of the comments about this too. Disney doesn't fuck around. Yeah, there's no way. Okay. Good studio sees the gaming community wants a genre of the game, develop it for real. Yeah, I think so too. The game has gone from that looks interesting. Now, why would not uh, touch it for a hundred foot pole? How can we trust any news coming from the devs now? Uh, I, I do think this is true that they have lost the trust of the community. And I think that they lost the trust of the community. That's a separate issue than if it's a scam or not. Because it's been delayed so many times, there's been so many issues with it coming out, that at this point, people are like, oh great, one more thing, who cares? So I expect to get the track record, uh, see they have abandoned all their previous games. Uh, you know, it blows my mind how this project get backed by NVIDIA after obviously being a scam. Maybe because it's not obviously a scam, and have you ever considered that NVIDIA, one of the biggest like what like graphics card uh you know producers or developers whatever the fuck you want to call it uh, i i'm not really sure what the title is what do you think the odds are that nvidia has more information than you do like i don't understand the uh uh the arrogance of youtube commenters thinking that they have the same level of information that nvidia does it's ridiculous